I'm a long time user of ZSH. I've been using ZSH basically since I started using Linux. And one of the reasons why was because it was very customizable. I really enjoyed the functionality that it gave to customize by prompt, to add plugins for certain things. And it was just an overall really good experience. But over the course of the last month or so, I came to a realization. I don't need all those features because Bash actually has all those features. And ZSH had some downsides, to be honest with you. Mainly, it was pretty slow. Now, granted, most of that is my fault because I used Oh My ZSH and that thing slows things down really badly. So I tried ZSH without Oh My ZSH and I didn't care for it all that much, but also it just felt like Bash to me. So around the time I started the two-year Linux challenge, I switched to Bash and I have not looked back since. So today what I want to do is talk about why I switched back to Bash, why I think basically everyone should just use Bash, and and talk a little bit about why ZSH was just not something that I needed. So that's what we'll do today. If you would leave a like on this video, I'd really appreciate it. It really does help the channel. So I switched back to Bash, and one of the reasons why, or the, the biggest reason why, was just that I did not need the extra features that ZSH offered but also the features that it did offer, I found I could actually get with Bash. So if you were to take a look at this and would ignore the NeoFetch, you'd actually would not know that this is Bash. If I clear this out, this is just my regular prompt and it's very similar to the prompt that I always had with ZSH. Now, one of the things I really like to do with my shell is to customize the prompt. I want it to look a little interesting. Sometimes I want there to be icons, sometimes I want there to be fancy colors, and stuff like that. It's never a functional thing, it's always just about aesthetics, but it's just something that I enjoy doing. And it always seemed more piddly for me to do all that customization inside of Bash than with ZSH, because with ZSH you could use Oh My ZSH, and all, it had a whole bunch of pre-configured themes and all this stuff, and you could customize your prompt without having to do a ton of work, which is just right up my alley. With Bash, you always had to do a little bit of extra work. Of course, then I discovered on my Bash and discovered that it had basically the same functionality, and I learned more about actually customizing the prompt inside of Bash and found that it really isn't that hard. It just does take a little bit of effort, and by some effort, I mean minuscule amounts of effort. So that was one feature I was easily able to keep, even though I switched back to Bash. Another one was tab completion. By having ZSH, you get something that allows you to type in like downloads, like that, and when you press tab, it'll actually complete it, even if you don't spell it 100% correctly, specifically when it comes to capitalization. So one of the things about Bash is that it does have tab completion. A lot of people think that it doesn't for some reason, or at least some of the people who argue in favor of ZSH think that it doesn't. It does have it. It's just when you type in something like this and then press tab, it won't actually complete that because there's no such folder spelled that way. Downloads is spelled with a capital D, not a lowercase d. But with certain tweaks, you can actually have tab completions just fine even though you're using Bash instead of ZSH. So the tab completions was, again, another feature that I could replicate inside of Bash very easily without having to have the overhead that ZSH forced on me. So one feature that ZSH has that doesn't really get easily replicated inside of Bash is the tab completion for CD itself. So when you're in ZSH and you press tab in a situation like this, it would actually allow you to tab through the entries for the next level of directories and files. So if I wanted to tab through these, it'd actually highlight this and then highlight this and highlight this as I tab through them. With Bash, it doesn't actually do that. It just gives me the results that are would be there, and then I'd have to type them in. So if I wanted to go into get things, I could do that very easily. But I don't have the tab highlighting that ZSH has. I find that I don't actually miss that all that much, to be honest with you. Another really neat feature of ZSH is the ability to partially complete a, a command from your history. So if I were to use CD and then press up, I would be able to see previous times I used CD. Again, I was able to replicate this very easily inside of Bash. So as you can see, I was able to replicate all of the features, or basically all the features of ZSH inside of Bash with fairly little work. If you guys want to see a tutorial on how I did that, you can leave a comment in the comment section below. But my point for this video is 
that the features of ZSH wall impressive aren't ZSH exclusive. And oftentimes with the whole extraneous stuff that you can add to ZSH, specifically things like plugins and stuff like that, you can actually slow ZSH down to a point where it just becomes really, really slow. Even if you don't use Oh My ZSH and just use the regular plugin system, you can still slow that thing down quite a bit. And that affects your workflow even when you're just moving around your operating system. It can take you extra time to move in between different directories. It can take you to time to ls or run specific commands if you're compiling things and, and moving around stuff like that it can take extra time because your shell's running slower with bash i have none of those problems but i actually managed, managed to get all the features that i want so going back to bash just made the most sense for me it allowed me to have the features without the overhead also all of my scripts are written in bash now zsh is mostly posix compliant as far as i know i've never had a single problem where I was running a script inside of ZSH that was a bash script and it didn't actually work. Most of the time because the shebang was calling the bash shell anyways and it just it just worked, right? I didn't have any problems where I was running any of any bashisms inside of ZSH even where I was having some issues. It's mostly one to one. I don't think that it's all the way there. I'm not actually sure. I'm not as much of a scripter as some other people, so you guys can correct me on that if if I'm wrong. But the point is, is I've never, I never had a problem with ZSH not being Bash compliant. But all of my scripts are written in Bash, and I know mostly Bash. I, I, any specific ZSH features inside of scripting files, I never learned any of those things. So it made more sense to be able to use my Bash knowledge inside of Bash and not have to deal with anything that ZSH might have as an overhang. So. So just going back to Bash made the absolute most sense to me, and I've been very, very happy with it. It's 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 astonishingly fast. I have the features now that I want to have. I have the tab completion. I have the fancy prompt and all the stuff that I seem to require. It just works really, really well. And on top of that, of course, Bash has fewer peculiarities when it comes to the number of files that it creates and requires, if that makes any sense to you. When you run ZSH, a lot of times it fills up your home directory with things like zcompdump and uh, zhistory and all this stuff. And for whatever reason, when I was running ZSH, a lot of times it would create multiple files like that. And I'd end up with a home directory that just had a whole bunch of ZSH related files in it. Now, I don't know if that was an all my ZSH thing or if it was something else, but it was just something that happened. With Bash, I haven't had that problem. I have a Bash RC file and I have like a, a history file, I think which was there anyways on my system before with ZSH, so not that big a deal. And that's literally it. It doesn't crowd my home directory with a whole bunch of files, which I highly enjoy. My home directory is enough of a mess without ZSH adding a whole bunch of nonsense to it. So, yeah. Also, another benefit to going back to Bash is that I was able to take all of my environment variables, which were in a ZSH-specific file, and put them into my .profile file, and that allowed me to have it in a standard place. Some programs, when they're looking for an environment variable, they look for it for whatever reason. There, I've just encountered this a couple times because usually when a, an environment variable is run, it's just in the system, right? That's the way it works. But there are some programs that I would run which would do a check for where those environment variables are, and then they would actually not find them inside of dot profile. They'd find them inside of of the, the ZSHN file, and that's not where they wanted them to be or something like that. It was just a couple of different times that I ran into that problem. Nowhere near normal, but just something that I thought I'd mention. So I'm back on Bash and very, very happy to be so. Now, I think that for most people, they just run Bash anyways. But I see a lot of people also talk about the benefits of ZSH, and I would say that unless there's a specific feature of ZSH that you absolutely need that you cannot somehow get on Bash, you're probably better off just running Bash. If you can't find that feature on Bash, then maybe explore ZSH. But I would say that Bash, for 99% of the people, can do everything that ZSH can do. And that means that you're going to be running a system that has a much broader community than ZSH does, which would, would provide you with support, has a better, obviously, scripting language, which is more broadly supported, and things like that. Now, for people who are using Fish, I don't even want to talk to y'all, because Fish is just really weird. So, 
I'll just leave it at that. Anyways, that's it for this video. If you have thoughts or comments on this, you can leave those in the comment section below. If you haven't already, leave a thumbs up on this video. It really does help the channel. You can follow me on Mastodon or Odyssey. Those links will be in the video description. You can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash the Linuxcast. Thanks to everybody who does support me on Patreon and YouTube. You guys are all absolutely amazing. Without you, the channel should not be anywhere near where it is right now. So thank you so very, very much for your support. I truly do appreciate it. You guys are awesome. Thank you so very much. Thanks, everybody, for watching. I'll see you next time.